something which is uh, maybe HR in we have done with this right so we have seen so many uh, we have created so many lists we have created so many document libraries and all right if you remember right like uh, you know whenever you add any item right if you just add item it will it used to open up a window right where you can actually add your uh, you know complete lists or documents or something yeah this screen right there is some screen which is you know which is uh, a template screen being provided in SharePoint. So we can also create our own uh, screens like this, which is you know uh, where we can have different fields. Uh, guys, you can mute. Mute. I think you, you one of you have to mute your mic. It's disturbing you. Yeah. Uh, just um, yeah. Thank you. So <coughs> so here you can see that there are so many uh, controls over here and. Uh, if you are adding any uh, you know custom library or template library which are which is already there in here like uh, when you go to more options like you can see something like libraries libraries which and all right so we have seen something like how to create a custom web part using dot net right and we have seen something which where, where where we can create something some entities on blocks using word so we'll just take up a uh, new uh, external Microsoft uh, you know office uh, I, uh, a template or item today which is uh, we will create something called libraries right so <coughs> where we can actually create so in, in under library you have some uh, these are something which are you know uh, 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 you know te default templates which which uh, Microsoft have provided in SharePoint but this may not be the main requirement which you have you may have some other requirements where you want to you know, do something else right so for that you can actually design your own uh, form actually so for designing that we use something called info paths so info path is nothing but a microsoft office uh, product which is uh, which is same as like you know it, it works in parallel to your microsoft word or dot net like how we actually connect to our uh, sharepoint let us see that uh, today which is if I go to Microsoft Office, you can see here you have two things, which is Microsoft Info Part Designer. So this designer is completely for designing some forms for your uh, SharePoint or for some other network uh, paths or some you know something which is you know which already have some custom entities and you want to give some screens or screens for them. You can use these things, right? Let me click on that. So we'll check out uh, you know, what 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 best we can do using this uh, info paths. Yeah. So th this is a basic you know editor of info path, and you can see right. So there are so many templates and so many uh, you know uh, different things which they have given like a SharePoint list. You can create a list. You can create a library. You can create an email, like uh, so many things, right? And you can create a database itself. So database is something like you know it internally gives database of access, right? And it will give a blank form, and all. So these are used in different ways. Like XML schema. So XML schema, uh, we can say that it it will be used in, you know, .dot net service protocols, right? And existing forms. So you can create many templates using info path. But this info path is mainly to actually design your screen, right? without coding you don't have to do anything like coding because it they it will provide it will provide so much of uh, you know uh, background processing codings like you where when we actually you know created something called web part which is a user defined web part or user wi which we which are which is not a default uh, web part in sharepoint we have developed in dot net right where we actually wrote some code but this will give you a complete user interface type where you can actually use the controls directly right and even the click events or or something will be provided for you itself and you can have a default value set directly you don't have to go for some HTMLs or not right so first let us see some SharePoint form library today where uh, SharePoint form library is something where you can actually save some documents right and and, and something like you know uh, our pictures or or some main documents so that is nothing but document library and we'll see how to actually create a manual uh, 
libraries using infopath so infopath is mainly used for drawing or designing a screen for some sh sh a list or an array right so let us check out with this so once you select this you have to uh, say something like design form so let me click on this design form so let us just discuss a use case first then and then we'll de design so let me just uh, go to our property collection right so today here you can see that i'm using completely my foundation server itself because you know your foundation server completely supports info paths right so it, it it because you know whatever you do here will be automatically will be you know uh, taken up over here right so let us just create a new site blank site one site and let me just add a blank site for let me just call it as info path site something info path site and let me give url and let me just more options let me just give unique user permissions we'll check out whenever you design something and you can also give some permission to that right and navigation quick launch yes i do want and link bar on the top yes i want it clear so whatever we do in info path right let's just uh, keep it in a new site so that uh, we don't we, we will not be confused with the different sites now here yeah so let us say i want a new group here itself right i will just say members and owners are admin and owner. let's click on that so this is our site now so here so we don't have any libraries and all right so let us see how to create a library using uh, and using a custom design whatever you want from infopath right so now this is your parent site now there is your parent site which is uh, your core party collection under which you have a site called info path site right this will be our uh, main uh, you know my main target where we want to create some libraries right let's go back and just say yeah i want to design a form so here you can see that you know there is a default you know screen you'll be getting this where this is a default screen and you, you can actually you know move ahead and uh, make this uh, you know entity or this screen so w like you know whatsoever complex you want to make so let us just make a simple one first so here let us say you can add your title let us say i want to add some it courses patch something let us say we are designing a small screen where i just w we just want to show like uh, this course will be starting from today and all and uh, please refer to the document uh, based on that right let us create that so it courses batch and we'll just say uh, batch details right? so let us design a screen uh, where we can give something called batch detail like when it, it's going to start right and who is the faculty and all right so so here you can see that you know this complete thing is nothing but a table here right this is a cell and this complete thing is nothing but a row right and you can see that this complete entity is nothing but a table here you can actually play with it actually just let me just select this and right click you can see that you know insert we have columns right and left rows and above if you go to delete you can delete the whole table or a column or a row right so you can play with this actually right where you have something called add control cell and add label cell right you have many things over here let us just take a simple one let's just say batch name right let's just say batch name here and let us say we don't want this column let us say right if you don't want this just right click and just say delete and just say delete column so it will just arrange up as it is let us say we don't want this uh, table itself right let's be you just you can just right click on delete table right which is you know you'll get a clean uh, form it batch courses right it courses batch and batch details let us say batch name and here so you want uh, to enter a batch name let us say right batch name you can just arrange this up if you don't, if you don't want to make it right so here so here you want to give some input control where user can input right you can see here this part of a ribbon is nothing but a complete controls right you can see text box combo box everything list box button right picture button a picture right check box addition box everything whatever 
he is compatible with SharePoint each and every control will be here right let us say take a text box here and you can see that a field is being created right so let me just uh, right click so if you want to set the fields or the properties of this uh, text box just go to text properties click on that and look, this is a very important window where you actually set what is the default name if you want right and all things right so let us just make it as let us first give the default uh, i mean field names we'll use some coding standards which is txt let us say batch name as of now we'll just create some controls right and uh, next one is uh, user let us say who is the guy who is creating this uh, batch let me just uh, insert one more text field text properties and txt user right and yeah uh, let us say uh, faculty Oops. click on this faculty name right and again let us say you want text box here and then if, so there are if you want to add more rows click on this right click and you can just say insert rows above or below let me just say below right you can get one more row here let us say let me just take some more things here quotes right quotes which quotes you want now uh, let's go for some other control let, let us pick up combo box which is drop down right let me just click here where you can actually select your combo box types so here let me just give this as right click and combo box properties that means uh, cbo uh, some combo and quotes some name so we'll see all these properties once we are actually done with the designing right and i want more rows insert rows below and right click insert rows below right. and here let us add start date right start date and here let's uh, you have one control called date picker let's use this where you can just uh, check whether uh, how uh, feasible it is it's very good control being provided date picker just go and just say dt pkr start date i'm just giving a field names here we are not we haven't started like how actually we can use them and let me just give end date batch end date right and let's pick up one more date picker here and just give the name as dt pkr end date right. so i'm in here and click ok and what else we can give batch name uh, who is a user uh, faculty name course started and uh, what else you can use here all right okay fine let's uh, let's first see these things okay so if you want to just you know design your own thing you can also design right it it, it, it doesn't you can have the whole ribbon with you you can just change up whatever you know uh, font you want right and all and you can uh, you know design your form in your own way like you know, if you want the whole cell to be in different pattern right you can just uh, design it like let me just design it like complete dark and oops just say border and shading uh, color let me just give you know, white here you can you can actually you know design your own form right uh, i click background i want it this and i want it white over here right? you can design you know whatever you know colors you want and these are uh, nothing but your cells and your uh, rows actually so whatever you want to design in uh, info path it, it it is all done in something called html table internally whatever you're doing so internally it is changing its properties actually right and this is what we have and now let us just say what 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 uh, actually the input should be now batch name let us give it as like yeah uh, whatever batch name you you may enter you you may give that or let us say i want we want to enter some uh, some meaningful batch name let's click right click on and text properties yeah, you can see here you have something called default value if you if you want to give some default value here 
and whenever uh, a person want to create something you want to give a batch name randomly right you can create anything so here you have something called default value so here you have something called function fx right this is a very important control or a or a feature here which you can actually enter whatever you want right you can actually enter the field field is nothing but whatever field you have over here or you can insert a function or insert a formula let us just use some formula which is concatting some strings let us say uh, concat of strings i would say batch and comma so now we'll see like i want to add something called date here right so let let me just click on insert function you can see there are so many functions right let me just click on date time right and our date our date time now which means whenever you add something right it will take this now as your date and time and it will append it to your batch and comma let us say yep i want to insert the user who is adding it you can you have something called user here right just say username whoever is logged in with the application you will get uh, you will get that username being uh, clubbed over here we will we'll be checking out this so how it is working we will check out batch now whether you want to i know if it is so just check before submitting it always try to uh, please check this whether this formula is correct or not for that you just have to click on verify formula it says formula does not contain any error right click on okay and okay now you can see that what whenever you actually create uh, try to add a batch name or a batch detail right it will be automatically rendered now let us say cannot be blank which is yeah this batch batch should be always uh, should be something right and now if you don't want anyone to allow to enter something you can just go back to display here you can just say read only whenever you click on read only which means no one else can be able to do this for, but but for now let us uh, enable this so that you know uh, anyone can you know uh, enter any any data over here and just say apply and okay now <coughs> now you can see here this field is again so this part of uh, you know your area is nothing but fields so whatever controls you are adding right will be uh, will be added under my fields right you can just see each and everything so whatever is happening over here right now let's go back to user now so user here what we uh, want is we want whoever is creating a uh, whoever is creating the batch we want that username to be here right so how to do that again so we have just seen so default value and the default value go to function so here insert function and just say user username so which means whoever is logged into a sharepoint let us say here let us say Srinath admin is uh, is logged in right so whenever you try to add something the username will be automatically picked up right so this is a completely feature being provided by uh, microsoft info path and this is again can be directly duplicated in your uh, sharepoint we'll see these things when we actually you know create a new item click on ok now let us say you don't want to uh, allow user to edit this right let's go back to display and just say read only right click on ok right. so it will be uh, it will be disabled and uh, as of now we can't see because you know we just have to move on and move on to uh, screen we have to publish this and then you can say and faculty name let let us just allow whatever uh, name uh, you know it can be right so let let us just leave it to uh, you know the user whoever is adding batch now one of the very important thing which is a combo box and whatever we are going to see now can up can be applied to everything like list box or or anything or like you know uh, your drop down list so you can do it so these things are something where you want to show some distinguished you know details like like this like let's go back to info institute let us say right you have something called courses right where you have different courses right let us say here whatever course is there i want to show some some courses now so here i don't want to e hard code anything if you just right click and go to combo box or this right you can see here enter charges manual where you can actually enter something let me just click on java uh, click on sharepoint right you can also do this you can also do this but what it happens is it will be static so 
it will be static in the sense whatever you enter here will be shown in your sharepan but we don't want to do that right but here how to connect your library which is codes with the existing content in sharepan let us see that let's go back to our site which is uh, info path site info path site right now first let us create a uh, list here which is site actions let me create a list a custom list which contains complete course list right let's go to list and create some new thing which is custom list and just say course list More options yeah i want these things and create now this is your custom list now let me just add few items here which is sharepoint codes save and then we have uh, java codes save right and let me add some dot net and one more which is let us say android right we have these courses let us say four courses now the biggest question is how we can connect this list which is in sharepoint with something where we are actually in designing phase right but actually you have to do that in designing phase itself because so in sharepoint if you have one list and you have one more list you can actually connect in uh, connect between both how we can connect is we have to go to if you remember we have to go to list settings right where where you can actually edit your column right edit your column what whatsoever you want so in the same way let us say now what we want to do is what we want to connect these things to our combo box here which is whatever distinct courses you have i want to show these things in here dynamically whenever i add something here it should be reflecting here right let's see that how so for that just right click over here and again go to combo box properties right and now here till now what we have seen is we have seen something called enter choice manually where you can actually enter something right but what we want to do is we want to get it from our sharepoint library you also have something called get choice from fields in this form fields in this form is whatever fields this is a field this is a field right so you can also get you know whatever field is there you can get from them but what we are looking is we are looking something called external data source right so we want to get from external because as per info path is concerned there can be any number of data sources let me just uh, like you know a data source can be a database or a sharepoint or some protocol like so protocol or or some quick protocol or something right so let us see what are the different sources we have click on add over here now we can see a uh, create a new connection or search uh, microsoft sharepoint server but let us create a new connection because I don't want to uh, waste time in here to to give search uh, all the Microsoft micro uh, or uh, SharePoint server instances which we have. Right? Let's create a new connection here. Click on next. Yeah, here you can see there are these type of data sources here, which is SOAP Web Service, REST Web Service. So these are nothing but your web services. So this uh, web services are any web services which are created in either. dot net java and no any any language or c++ any language you can actually get the details from them and you also have sharepoint we will be checking out this and we have something called database where uh, if you have any server like you know we have something called sql server we have already seen that right you can actually connect to the table of uh, database and we can get the values you can do that and you have xml document if you have xml document where the all your uh, courses have been saved you can also talk to them right but now for now let us say i want the information from a list or a library so we have created something called course list here let us see how to actually connect this up now let me just uh, select the sharepoint list or library let's go next so now you have to provide from where so from which path you want to get the list so here if you go to info site site right so it, all your lists will be under your If I go to all site content, right? You can see your list here, right? So let's go back to uh, uh, your home page here, info site path, and let me just copy this site, right? Which is info path site, and let me just paste it over here, right? And just say next. Now it will ask for credentials again. Click on OK, right? Now it will communicate with your server, and now you can see here your course list is here. 
right which we have created in shape one we have created a course list here which is now been downloaded to the whole list here now let's say next you can see everything here which is title go back to your sharepoint list again you can see the title is actually which you have something called here uh, all the courses right so for that let us select i want the title here as a as as a my combo box items let's click on next and uh, it says store a copy of data in the form template we don't need this right just click on next and just say yeah automatically retrieve data when form is open which means we want something which is dynamic yeah we want it dynamically right click on finish now you can see here all your data will be automatically loaded here but we can see that when we actually you know load this form right so value so what is the value you want to see let us say i want to see the title here right because title contains something called course name and again display name should be again a title right so that's how we actually connect to something which is a sharepoint list to a info path designer let's click on okay and this thing is same for everything like when you add if you want to add something your text box right you can also do that to some cell right if you want to make sure these two things are uh, same you can also you just have to go to again properties right where you can actually make the binding right and now let's go back to uh, start date which is again a, a direct date here let us say we want to give some default date here right so let's say date picker which is uh, a properties we have seen something called right click and date picker properties right because we have we have taken something called date picker control here right now so now let us say yeah we don't want it to be blank because we want something over here and again if you want to give some date again some default date right you can just go back to fx where you can actually uh, select uh, something you want let me just say insert function and they uh, let us say i want to add this right add this in the sense see if you are starting a batch today you won't publish something right if your batch if your batch is starting uh, let us say five five days later then you will actually you know make your uh, uh, advertisement or batch details into market right so let us say i want to use something called add days function you can see this yet add days the date like from which date and how many days you want to add so for this you can see here add days you have two fields so let's double click here right and if you want to get it from one of these fields you can get it or if you don't want again select this and say insert function let us say i want date today's date i i want the date to be today today in the sense whatever uh, so on whatsoever date you are adding that date will be copied here and let me just delete this today and from that day i want 7 days to be added let us say like if i am adding today 7 days later a batch is starting right and your start date will be 7 days later click on okay right your date will be added right and just say cannot be uh, blank and and display uh, let us say you know it is uh, not disabled and click on okay now you are uh, we are done with something called start date and let's go back to end date yeah so uh, again your end date can be anything and what can we do here uh, yeah let us say we want to check something like your start date and end date should be or end date should be at least later than the start date right how to put that condition over here because whenever you enter something in end date right we should have a default check inside that uh, your start your end date should be at least greater than your start date right so how to do that is we have something called add rule here right click on that and you can see here each everything is blank if it is blank show error right is in future right or is before you have something called is before if you can see here right is before in the sense end date here end date we have selected this is before if it is before of what we'll see that is before click on this show validation error now here it it is it is asking so if end date if this end date is before the following following in the sense what is the attribute you want to select click on fx and just say uh, here you can say insert field so select on start date and click on okay 
and click on OK. Now it says that yes, your end date if it is before start date then give some error. You can see here right in this field the rule the rule is created right. So end date is less than start date or end date is blank. So in these so whatsoever error ha happens this will be shown. Enter a date let us say enter end date on or after start date right we can just give something right on or after start date right? and just click on more options it give you so if you want to give some uh, screen tip show tip you can just give this right and let let me just so that is how we have created a rule here right and now let's go back and now here we'll create a one more rule here now let us say your start date if you are entering some start date right we just gave a default start date to five days let us say a, a user is selecting some uh, some past past date right which is again not allowed right so you again you have to set some rule to start date that uh, user should not be allowed to select the past date so you have direct rule here uh, something called is in the past right is in the past right show validation error it say it it will ask you like what is in the past right okay so this is here you can see a rule rule for this which says start date is less than today if it is less than today you should give enter today's date or a date in the future right you can give some, some uh, error over here right so now this is how we create a, a design and form and let's go back and just uh, publish this up to SharePoint and see how actually we can you know see this uh, document library or library in our screen right let me just first you have to save this let me just save this up to library documents and just say let me just call it as course batch batch some batch courses course and save and now uh, we have saved it on how to publish is is like again go to file it is same as what we have seen in microsoft document document word document where we have seen something like you know uh, you have in under info you have direct option called publish right click on this publish now you have many things here you can see you can also publish it in network location or export the source files or email it or uh, publish it to sharepoint click on this now when you click on this again it is asking where exactly you want to uh, publish this let me just select we have already given info institute or let me just go back and say i want it in info path site not info institute right let me just select this site go back to that i want it here right let me click on next yeah now it gives so what is the type you want whether you want it a site content type or library we are actually looking for something called form library let, let it be click on next and then it will give you do you want to create a new library yes we do want click on next now you have to give some name to this let me just give same name as batch courses something batch courses or batch course detail or some yeah, batch courses this is for new batch details something right description and let us say next now you will get uh, something called column names right because uh, whenever you are adding a library like let us say you are adding some uh, template library which is already been provided in sharepoint right whenever you add that library you will be getting some default columns right so these those default will columns will be mapped to something like a text box or a date time and all you can ask uh, you can also do this in here which is let me just click on add we'll see so you can see all your fields in here right which are we have added right so what is this field 3 okay it, it, it seems it's a faculty name we have there so let us let it be let us say batch name yeah you can see the same name here let us say my I want the column name as batch name click on okay so whatever field fields you want you are you actually want to show it in sharepoint site and let me select a uh, batch name and course what is the course we want right okay and add what is the start date right start 
date here okay and end date so what is the end date for this course so that it will be more clear okay right so we are done with this so what is the uh, columns which you actually want to actively show next now it's ready to publish right you have selected something called form library will be the name will be batch course so this is a summary form anyways right and location is this info if you just check this screen is very important again just check out before publishing because once you pub publish right again anyways you can delete at, at what whatever time you want but it's better to check this right and just say publish so it will actually actually you know connect your uh, data source which is info path and it is actually creating a template for you which is uh, user defined template of uh, IT course batch library So this is how we actually create a complete info path. Using info path, you can design any 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 library or a list, right? In the same way, and you can actually give what whatever uh, control you want, like data picker, option, or drop down, or whatever, right? So once we publish this, we'll see more uh, other properties. <coughs> So it will take a while because it has to compile, run it in your info path machine engine and then it will take you to your SharePoint server right and it will add up the whole uh, controls and all here. Right. So this is done now. So if you click on open this form library it will open a site for you but we don't want that right and just say close. right yeah now let's go back to our site and let us see whether it is created if you yeah you can see it here right if you refresh this page you can see libraries otherwise something called batch courses is being created click on that right and you can see this so batch name course start date and all right and these are something which is by default added now let me click on something called add document When you click on add document right so whatever screen we have developed right we have developed some screen where you want uh, you know uh, everyone to use that screen to actually input something right so let us see how it loads here yeah download yeah can you see here it actually loaded our screen which is it course batch batch it is and you can see here by default we gave something called batch today's date and time and the username right it loaded and if you want to edit you can edit this right you can just say some other or, or some java or some, some share point something share point batch and user you can see this user will never be edited we can't edit this right because it's a read only field we have provided and faculty name faculty name just say sam again something sam right and course name if I drop down can you see here it will automatically load everything so we haven't we are not doing anything like you know uh, dynamically it is getting from data source so once we add this field we'll just check out by adding one more item in our course right let us select SharePoint now you can see here it it's by default it is adding up seven days latest day right like today is some 29 and it, it added something seven days and it gave us fifth may right and let me just take this to past day 28 can you see this it gave me the red line if you go there it will say enter today's date or date in the future so this is the alert which we have kept if you remember right so for that let me just go back and select some future day which is seven or something right and end date end date is uh, nothing here because we haven't provided any default date right let's go back and select end date first let us uh, select the past date again 22 right it says end date enter end date on or after start date right so let's click on this and just say may we have selected some eighth right okay let us just select uh, may 8 okay it's a may 8. let me just select something like may some 30 days course okay. now you are uh, there is no uh, you know error in these two right now it's done so once you are done just click on save 
once you click on save right it will automatically take this to your sharepoint and a new record will be added to that so before doing that it will it will prompt to so what is the name you want to uh, add the record right let's uh, open it or open it up first because we are working with something called document library right so here you can see that right under your batch courses right so it is asking like what exactly you want to give the name as so let us say batch batch some 102 uh, is the name of what uh, the record you want click on save okay. now it will go back to the site again right and it will actually save now it is taking batch 102.xml where uh, and the whole xml your these items will be mapped up right? and it is adding up and it will say something should say something here <coughs> okay so it is saved now let's go back and see yeah it got auto refresh right can you see it here so it directly says let me click on this batch 102 it says open a file right it will actually open something which is xml directly right so you can see that you know some file is being created automatically right so that's how we actually create it out so let me just click on this and click on and let me just close this window and click on edit document right again it opens your document in here right where all the details will be populated directly to your uh, info path right and you can actually edit each and every date time batch whatever you want and pop, you know uh, save it back to the server right what is that yeah, it is just opening up now let it open it will open that so in this way you can actually create any uh, library you want right you can add more now you can see that for this batch library right you, you also have the complete settings you can so you can whatever we have seen so document library go to library settings you can see that you know whatever you have added is directly been you know entered over here right and they anyways they are you know they are something which is disabled we can't do anything over here now let's go back to something called modify view where uh, you have to go back to batch courses library and modify view right and again you can you will see the same uh, pattern right same pattern which we have seen whatever uh, thing you want let us say i don't want this uh, modified modified by check dot to right let's click on just okay hmm? you can see that same. so whatever you can do over there you can provide it here only thing is why we are using external info paths is to create a uh, good designer for uh, for the entry screens right so that is how we use uh, your info paths right and now so once your uh, this is ready right you can you can actually modify and directly deploy into your uh, sharepoint let, let, let me just uh, enter something here which is right click and just say insert uh, some rows below right and let me just say something like you know uh, some something like batch uh, batch uh, placement right batch placement like just uh, give something like uh, some rich text box where you want to enter something how how actually you want it to enter right I click on rich text box properties and just say yeah cannot be blank it can be blank let us say right and just give it as rch txt comments let us say 
or, or placements right and click on ok right so once you are done save it up again so it will save and you have some button here which is a quick publish right if you click on this right it will automatically go and publish using the same uh, path because this info path uh, screen is already shared with the with this info path site stream which is in our corp id collection right it will directly communicate there and it will be deployed it will be deployed over there creating your uh, just upgrading uh, this and publish yeah publish successfully okay and go back to uh, oh sorry ba go back to your let me just close the screen go back to batch IT courses again right click on add document right just give user ID password right save and update form because this form is already been downloaded right so once you are new user you can just see here right so this is how you actually you know create your uh, info path screens and design in your own way whatever uh, type you want you can actually change the whole uh, view of this actually right let's go back to uh, info path designer again right and just open up some thing which is we have created some batch course right and just say so I said this is a complete table right and just uh, say the designer background you can actually change the what whatever designer oops it's weird it's better now right and just uh, give this as background color right. and just save some color over here right and just save and upload direct upload and we have to provide the credentials because we have closed it and opened it again right so that's the reason why we have to provide the details again <coughs> Saving up your server now. And again, this is a complete, uh, you know, I would say uh, developer's role here and deploying part is administrator role again, right? So this is pub published. Let me just close it up and click on batch IT courses refresh. Yeah, click on add again. Yeah, it just says something and save an update form. So it will download the new form again. Okay. <coughs> and it will update to you. Right. So this is how uh, it actually works in here. And you can also, yeah, we just have we have to see whether this is dynamically loading or not. Right? Let, let us see that. Let's go back to course list and let's add a new item here, which is uh, let me just say J2 double E save right we have one more item here go back to courses click on add and just keep this so uh, save and update right <coughs> so while downloading this part itself it will download even the data part which is dynamic dynamically being loaded right it will download everything and then it will show you You can see that your generator will be added, right? So it's how is how you actually can uh, add the details, right? And <coughs> yeah, so this let me just give one more uh, detail here: faculty name, some guest one, something, and just give some date and date as some uh, 27 May, and just say this is for. placements right and click on save here right. 
so it will be oops let's click on yeah save here this up open and open the new one which is batch course again yeah okay yes okay file okay info path designer and open yeah <coughs> fine not a problem so here so let us check out something else again now which is uh, we can also add something called buttons in here right so how to add button again so let me just uh, so all the all these are tables again which is like whatever you can do in excel right you can do each and everything in here right which is like uh, if you want to create a button right let me just uh, merge it up you can say merge cells right if you want to split it up you can just say split and how many cells you want you can split it again right you can do everything just merge it up and just say button right i want a button which is click on button and yeah i want it to be center line and click some size over here right so this is a button you created right and just say what action you want to do it here let me just say right click on properties right you can see this button let us say i want it to be submit submit button right and here you can say action right let us say I want it to be submit form. Right? Click on OK. You must enable submit form creating button. Click on. Submit options. Okay, I'll allow user to submit form and where I want to submit is document library. So you understood what it was asking? So what it was asking is so what we are trying to do is whenever it, we click on the submit right i want to actually upload this data so for that i just took something called action button and i just submit uh, set up something called submit but for this you have to select something called allow users to submit this form where where you want to do it so i se i will select something called sharepoint document library because this is where my the data is there actually let me just click on okay right and you have to set some data source okay fine so yeah again which document library you want i want it in info path site again and the form name is again same okay hello all right let's create this next okay. just give let me know here again click on okay now this actually button will be tagged to something called uh, your submit option where do you want to actually save this record when you click on this button right go back here right main submit and finish now it came to main submit which is a name where you can actually you actually gave the name right now click on ok click on apply and ok right now the submit is saved now save it up and quick upload so this will be again uploaded to your server now. successfully published and just close this up and let's go back and just refresh and document and boom save an update form
you can see the submit button. Oops, submit button here. But uh, anyways, we haven't entered and we directly took uh, this data again. So it will be added again to. Uh, So click on refresh. Where is that button? Click on add document. Okay. So we are here. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Let me just say some new. Problem. Okay, is it fine now? I'm just. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Just say some name here. Bad SharePoint. Let us be. One here too. Faculty names and admin course again to some. So when you click on submit again, uh, it will take us to the same folder where we actually want to save. It will it should open a folder path where you want to save this. So let us see whether it opens it or not. Uh, saving as okay, it is actually overriding the existing uh, one because we have done something like override, right? Okay. You can see that you know it is overriding the existing one. Let's go back to the designer again, which is info path designer. And open your designer, which is a batch course, right? And here, right click and batch button properties, submit options, manage, yeah, submit, modify. When you click on modify, yeah, you we have given that override if file exists, right? Let me just uncheck this and see what happens. Next, admin. <coughs> so it's a main submit again. Finish. Close. Uh, apply. OK. And save and publish. <coughs> this time, let us see whether it takes the same document or not. is refreshed over here batch 102 and all so this is all based on the requirement you know they, they will be developing the screens you know because uh, so in the same way you can develop any 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 number of complex screens where uh, if 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 you are developing a product called trading product right they'll be having so many uh, template screens they want to do so everything will be done using these things where you have something called HTML table where you can actually play with all right. Let's go back here, refresh, go side, go to batch courses, add document again. But before that let me just close this up. Save. So it will open up. Save an update form. So let me just give some admin here. Close to SharePoint. Just give some MD to something. Give me something and just say not applicable and this is submit. And let us see what happens here. <coughs> Trying to submit the same, uh, you know, form dot XML again. Yeah. Okay, because we have already given this. Yes, I we didn't give 
the same uh, data right again let me just save it here Side from the website, let me just uh, go back and see. This was the old record which we have created. Let me just delete this document. I just want to show whether this submit button is able to be able to work it out or not. is taking the form dot XML. Also find not a problem. This uh <coughs> anyway this is again taking to double info site where uh, there is a form dot XML again and we gave that you know you should not give this option right okay anyways we'll see this because you have some option called save as right save as form to let us say right and let me just submit it here. Okay, not an issue. It's, it, it is already there actually. Okay, we'll we'll check out this tomorrow. Not a problem. I'll let you know why this is happening because we have to change some properties again, right? So this is how we actually design our uh, screen in. Uh, sorry, info. Sorry, info. Info path, right? And how we info path, right? And how we to and basically, and basically this and basic, you know, uh, and basically info path, this, you know, uh, info path is directly I mean, connected to your is directly connected to your directly coupled to share points right? whatever you do in there right it will be directly refreshed over here because right? you know, they are directly because like, you know they are once directly you like you know uh, uh, once you connect uh, your where you can, uh, actually, where you can uh, actually see them in here yeah. Yeah. Okay, so It's done. It's done now. Sorry, I was just showing. Sorry, I was just showing you that. Sure, not a problem. Nah. Okay, you can just. Okay, you can just. Fine. So, anyways, yeah. Let's so, anyways, yeah. Let's wind up here, and, and, we'll, continue and we'll continue this. Uh, not a problem, guys. Not a problem, guys. Sorry, right, I sure. more time Sorry, I just I took just more time because I, I was just, you know, I was wondering why that was coming, right? Anyways, let's stop it here now.